I'm Billy from the Waterwise Community Center, and I'm here on location at the Montclair Place. Today, we're going to be talking about groundwater. What do you know about groundwater? Where do you think groundwater likes to hang out? If you said under the ground, you're totally correct. Today, we're going to be exploring how water makes its way down there and why it's very important for all of us up here. You may be wondering why I'm in the parking lot if I'm talking about groundwater. Well, I like your curiosity. Today we're going to be following some water and find out just how it makes its way underground. Before we talk about groundwater, first I'd like us to make some predictions. Here I have a map of our community, including the Montclair Place, which is right here. If you'd like to follow along at home, there's a link down below that'll let you print out this map. First, we're going to be identifying all the black and gray areas in our community. That's going to be our concrete, asphalt, or any kinds of streets or roads. Make sure you color it with a black marker. Now that I'm finished coloring all the black and gray areas, I can see that it's quite a lot in our community. Next thing that we're gonna do is be looking at all of the green areas, which are areas that are filled with grass or plants. Maybe things like people's yards or parks. Well, now that we've got everything colored in, let's figure out what this means. All of these black areas that we've colored in are all concrete and asphalt. These surfaces are known as impermeable, meaning that water is not able to enter the ground from these surfaces. Instead, they just run right off and follow wherever gravity takes them. The next surfaces, these green surfaces, are the exact opposite. These are permeable surfaces, meaning that any water that lands on here gets soaked into the ground and enters into our groundwater system. To learn more about runoff and permeable and impermeable surfaces, we have a video that you can check out in our description below where you'll learn a little bit more about these different surfaces. So as you can see, in our community we have a lot of impermeable surfaces, but it's extremely important for us to capture as much water as we possibly can. How do we do this if we have big impermeable surfaces like our parking lot right here? We're going to pour some water and follow it on its journey as we figure out just where it goes when it falls on these impermeable surfaces. Water from all over the parking lot enters into this tunnel. This water then passes underneath buildings, parking lots, and hundreds of different cars every single day. The tunnel then opens up right next to these houses. This allows water that's falling on these houses to enter and join up with the rest of the water. This water then enters a second tunnel. This tunnel goes underneath a playground area for a middle school. Finally, the water ends up in our basin. Let's go down and check out what happens next. So, our water has just taken a really cool journey after it's fallen on all of our streets, sidewalks, and our homes. It's gone through all of the storm drains and ended up here at our groundwater recharge basin. You can see that we have a lot of space for water to fill up this groundwater recharge basin. And after it fills this area up and gets too full, we have a certain area that the water begins to drain to. Let's go take a look and see what's over there. So after all the water has overflown, it's come through here and 
as you can see, it's picked up a lot of things along the way. Do you know what we're talking about? It's picked up a lot of trash from all over our community. So this is a special area that almost no one can go. So we have special permission to come do a tour down here. Let's go see just where the water goes after it's overflown. So here we are at this gate at the end of the tunnel and we have this break in between us and that area over there. Let's go see just what's on the other side of this gate. It's another groundwater recharge basin. Let's go down and check out what it looks like. Kind of hard to believe, but this groundwater recharge basin can get filled with water. All that water soaks in to the ground at about a rate of a foot a day. So I'm down here by the water in the groundwater recharge basin, and you can see the gate that we've entered through is right over there. The problem of trash has followed us even to this little area of water. And I have a question for you. Would you drink this water? I wouldn't. This water is extremely polluted, but we use it for so many things in our community. As the water seeps into the ground, all of the rocks and gravel beneath our feet help to clean the water as it rushes through. It may get cleaned as it goes into the ground, but there is so much pollution and trash that it's gonna be a lot of work. So if you can write in the comments below what you think a solution to this problem is, we'd love to hear it. Now that the water is in the ground, what's next? Well, we have to get to it. And the way that we do that is with pumps, just like the one that you see in the background right here. That water is extremely important to us because we've been using it for hundreds of years for things like crops, for food, or for any other uses. In this community, over half of all the water that we use comes from the groundwater. The way that we pump it up can be shown with my model right here. All of our groundwater is stored in these little cracks and areas inside in between the rocks. And we have machines that pump it up and measure and monitor just how much we take and how much is left in the ground. All the groundwater that we take out actually makes a difference. In this historic photograph, you can see just what happens when we don't take care of our groundwater. This pole marks the ground level of the town at three different years. This town used so much of their groundwater that it began to sink. The ground used to be up here, where it's marked 1925. After 52 years of taking from their groundwater and not replacing it, you can see that the land sunk all the way down here, where it says 1977. That's why it's super important to have enough water to be able to fill this groundwater recharge basin because we want to make sure that we're recharging all the groundwater that we use down below us. And that's the end of our tour. So I have a special challenge for you. Next time it starts raining, come on down to the water basin here at the WaterWise Community Center and just check out how full our basin can get. You'll be seeing all this water that's just waiting to become our groundwater. This is Billy for the WaterWise Community Center, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.